Hi all, Chef Sally here. For today's video, I'm going to show you how to make sponge toffee. Sponge toffee, also known as cinder toffee, honeycomb, sea foam, and hokey pokey are all the same. It is a sugar that's cooked to hard crack stage with baking soda whisked in at the end, creating a lovely airy structure that looks very much like honeycomb. In Canada, we sell candy bars named Crunchy, which is a sponge toffee that's enrobed in chocolate. In Australia, they have the equivalent bar named Violet Crumble. In my research, I found out that adolescents in Australia would use the Violet Crumble wrappers for condoms. I enjoy making sponge toffee as it's easy to make, it takes very few ingredients, and you feel like a bit of a mad scientist as you watch the sugar develop and grow with the baking soda. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Consider subscribing as it helps the channel grow. I offer videos every week on baking and confections, as well as culinary and some surprises in there once in a while too. Now let's get to this video as I show you how to make sponge toffee. Before cooking the sponge toffee, prepare the pan first. Spray the pan with oil, then line with parchment paper. This will help prevent the toffee from sticking in the pan. Whenever I scale sticky ingredients like glucose, corn syrup, or honey, I place my pan on the scale as well as place my spatula in the pan. Program the scale to zero and begin weighing your sticky ingredients now. As I accounted for the weight of the spatula and the pan, I can place the spatula into the pan to get an accurate weight of these ingredients. Weigh the glucose and the honey. If you do not have glucose, you can substitute for corn syrup. Add your sugar followed by your water. Give the pan a stir and cook the sugar solution to approximately 149 to 150 degrees Celsius. Be careful during the final cooking stages as sugar is thermogenic in nature and can have a tendency to heat too quickly. When cooking your sugar to this temperature, the sugar will still appear pale, but that is fine. It will still develop in color once the baking soda is added. Quickly remove from the heat and whisk in the baking soda. The hot sugar solution will aerate and expand with the addition of baking soda. Transfer the mixture into your lined pan. Always use a good heat-proof silicone spatula to scrape out as much of the billowy sponge toffee as possible. Allow the sponge toffee to cool completely. This should take an hour or two. Be careful with the size of your pan as you might encounter some overspill like I did, but no worries. I simply snipped off the sides and snacked on the overhang as it is similar to Dalgona candy. Here are two samples of sponge toffee. The one on the right was cooked a few degrees higher, creating a more bitter taste. In addition, I left the toffee out for a few days. As a result, the toffee became soft and crumbly. As sugar is hygroscopic in nature, the sugar will attract humidity in the environment, making a sticky, soft, and less desirable candy. When making sponge toffee, ideally you want to work on a nice dry day. Avoid humid days to avoid this problem. Once the sponge toffee is cooled, it is time to break apart. I like to slice the toffee with a serrated knife in lengths. This candy can also be snapped in your hands. This toffee has great air bubbles distributed throughout, earning its name as sponge toffee. It's time to cover them with chocolate. I crystallized a bowl of dark chocolate to cover the sponge toffees. The dark chocolate provides bittersweet notes that complement the sweet caramelized notes of the sponge toffee. To dip the sponge toffee, you can use a confectionery dipping fork. Cover the toffee in chocolate, then shake off the excess to create a nice thin shell. When it comes to dipping larger pieces like sponge toffee, I also like using chopsticks as they work well for this application too. I can have a firm grasp of the candy and handle it well as the dipping process can go much faster. When coating the toffee in chocolate, Shake off the chocolate and scrape the excess off against the side of the bowl while working clean, neat, and organized. Allow the chocolate to set for at least an hour before transferring it to a plate or for packaging. This sponge toffee is crispy, airy, and bittersweet. 
It takes very little ingredients to make, just a bit of patience. Plus, it is fun to watch the sugar expand with the baking soda. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found value and learned a couple things about sponge toffee and how to handle sugar. See you next week with a brand new video. Cheers.